YouTube, what is up? It's AD with US Squads. I hope you're having a kick-ass day. Today I am going to show you how to install the V3 Magneto Speed onto the business end of a rifle. And uh, for this application, we're going to be hooking you guys up with instructions on how to set this up on a suppressor. So it's going to be fairly the similar steps as a normal rifle without a suppressor, but I'm going to show you an additional part that we're going to use to do that correctly. Now what we have here is a uh, 30 cal Sanserco suppressor. Um, it's a Saker, Sanserco Saker, and I, I currently have a uh, cover on there now, but we will uh, actually pull that off right now. So here's the suppressor. This is what we're going to mount the V3 uh, chronograph onto, and it's mounted on a uh, just a Rem 700 with uh, McCree Precision stock. Now. You can see right there I have a chamber flag in. Uh, very important to make sure that your rifle is free and clear of any ammunition. The magazine is out, ammunition is away, the bolt is open. So before we start this process, even in the field, please guys, just make sure your rifle is safe since you'll be handling the business end of your, your weapon. And you definitely don't want to uh, have it loaded with any ammunition. I know it seems like common sense, but you see stuff in the news all the time and all those typically lack uh, common sense. So here's what we got here. We have the Magneto Speed V3. Uh, we have the bayonet, uh, the computer, the spacers with the heat shield thingy, 3.5 millimeter jack, and also our alignment rod to test to make sure that our, uh, our there's a clear line of sight through the bore, okay? So let's show you guys how it's done, and uh, we'll start off right now. Okay guys, let's get our uh, stuff put together here. We got, um, let's get our bayonet set up. Now the bayonet, uh, we're gonna need a few things here to get the bayonet set up. We are gonna first, we're going to first uh, get our parts together. So here's the computer. I'm just gonna put this to the side with the uh, 3.5 millimeter jack. We don't really need that at this exact moment. So we're gonna just shift those to the side. Uh, I've kind of already got the parts together that I need to get the correct spacing. This is going to actually be a cheat sheet for those who actually own a Science Co. Saker. You just need the smallest hard rubber piece spacer. And you're going to need the, uh, the rubber base. This goes on the bottom of the suppressor. So I just put those together like so. They actually don't snap together, but they go together pretty nicely. Uh, when you push them together, they stay. They don't fall apart. And then and I'm going to take that. And I'm going to put that onto the top of the bayonet slot right here where it's actually supposed to go. So now I have those two pieces on top of this spot right here on the bayonet, as you can see. Okay, that's done. So once that's done, I have this little heat shield deal. And this is for the suppressor. And what you're going to do is you're going to put these these rib side is going to go on the suppressor and the smooth side is going to go where the strap is and as you can see there's these little lips that will keep the strap on so it's going to be rib side on the suppressor on top with the strap on top of it and this is a heat mitigation shield so your stuff doesn't get too hot so let's go to the actual um, end business end of the barrel here and let's show you guys just how that's set up. So again, rib side on top of the suppressor. I'm going to take this with my spacer. And my spacer just fell off. And that's, I guess, why you could screw it in. But I typically don't. And I just basically slide this over. Use the uh, top end of this heat mitigation thing. I'm going to push this up. And how I'm going to line this is kind of your business. But I typically I'm going to put the end of the barrel or device kind of in the middle of this half moon thing right here so that's kind of where I'm going to initially align it once I get that done I'm just going to ratchet this on and then I'm going to use this little twist thing to tighten it up pretty good okay so I'm going to just tighten that on then use this to really secure this this little knob here okay Okay, once I do that, it's going to be on pretty nicely. 
And let me just move this box because it's kind of taking some of the contrast out here. So as you can see, now I have this. Now you want this on nice and firm. You don't want it to tilt up or down because you don't want this to be hit with your projectile. The key thing is to have this closest to the bottom of the bore, this right here, without it actually being in, in the path of the bullet. Because obviously if it is in the path of the bullet, you're going to shoot it and it's going to damage it. So I take the alignment rod and I place it here and I just want to make sure that that clears the bore. And what I want is this alignment rod to be near the bottom end of the bore. Okay. And what you can do, and this is why you want the rifle to be empty, is you can actually look through and make sure this rod clears the bore. Make sure there, you can see daylight in there because if this is tilted up or down it could cause problems in the readings. And then what we like is this to be um, right in the middle here so you get a good reading off of your magneto speed. Okay. So once that's aligned and that's at the bottom, now again you don't want this to be if I was to take this and put that right there, that's kind of right where the, the round is exiting. But you don't want you want this top piece of the alignment rod to be at the bottom axis of the bore. Let me give you a little bit better picture of it here. See how that clears that? Let's see if I can get you a better picture, guys. Sorry. See? When you look down the bore, you want to make sure that that's not like that. If that was like that, that would be an issue. But we can see that it clearly clears the axis of the bore. So the projectile will not, should not hit your, uh, your device, your, your, your bayonet. Okay? Now that we got that clear, it's very simple. On the very back end here is a uh, 3.5 millimeter jack right here on the very end. You simply take your little device here, put it, push it in all the way so it's flush, and then take your computer and push that right in on the top. And that will turn on your computer. Okay, and then you're ready to go. At this moment, you're set up. You're good. So a few things we've made sure. We've made sure that this is on really tight. Uh, when I say tight, I mean, you know, tight, firm, not shaking around, not loose. Because if this is tight onto this pad, this is going to be level. Okay. The, what you don't want is this to be loose, so this is aimed up or down, so you can have a potential of striking this with your rifle. So um, from there, we can go to our computer. we can do a few things what we're going to do is we're going to change the sensitivity to normal Okay. now just to give you a heads up when i was shooting my suppressed 22 i actually had to change the sensitivity because it was not reading because it's just super slow and quiet so i had to go to custom and i had to go to sensitivity 4 to get that to work. But since I'm shooting my 308, sensitivity will be fine at normal. And that's good. Okay? That's it, guys. I mean, any other questions, let me know. I guess I can quickly show you guys how to set this up without the suppressor um, and uh, show you guys how it's done. As soon as you pull this uh, 3.5 millimeter jack off, the computer shuts off. Take that off, no problem. I can loosen my little thumb screw here, this little knob, a rubberized knob. And once I do that and loosen this strap up, this comes off. Another thing I want to note too, guys, is when you're shooting suppressed, this heat mitigation system is, you know, I don't know if it can really handle extreme heat because you know the suppressor with rapid fire drills can get very, very hot. So be careful, you know. Be careful on, on your shooting strings and pay attention to the heat you're producing. Because, yeah, this is a bolt gun. We're going to be taking shorter strings. Uh, but you could be shooting an AR-10, uh, a SCAR, where you might be tempted to shoot 20 rounds fairly fast. 
And if you do, this suppressor is going to get extremely, extremely hot. So that's something to note. So obviously now with the uh, with us taking the suppressor off, we're going to need different uh, spacers because that was the spacer selection. So here's my various spacers that I have. I'm going to quickly, now I don't need this rubber suppressor piece. This piece is no longer in use. I don't need it anymore. So let's find out how, you know, let's find out to what extent we need um, the other piece. You know, let's find out how much space we need for this without the, see, as you can see, this is too high. Here's the access of the bore. This will obviously hit the bayonet. So I definitely need some more spacers. I'm going to use a big one and a thin and a small rubber one. So let's do that. And it's getting close. I need one more. I can you can uh, use your eyes to kind of get this to get this figured out. So It's going to be pretty close to good here based on what I see. So I have a muzzle brake on there and this works with muzzle brakes. It's not a big deal. And as you can see, um, I'm going to have to tighten this down here. Okay. So once I get the right spacing, I'm just going to simply tighten this down. Now, when you eyeball the spacing, um, when you tighten it down, it's going to pull it up. So you, again, you're going to want to make sure that your alignment rod is it's clear and out of the way of the alignment rod. And I'm going to show you a close-up of that and how, that's, how that looks here. One sec, guys. It's going to be a little bumpy. I'm going to pull it off the tripod. Now, you notice the bottom of the hole, bottom of the barrel is at the bottom of that rod there. You notice how that clears? Can you see that? It's very clear right there. That That's going to clear. It's going to give me enough space to clear the bayonet and have plenty of room to not hit my bayonet. Okay, that's very important. And that's why that alignment rod that comes in the box is very important. Okay? So now that we know that the alignment is good and we're not going to strike our bayonet on a shot, this is appropriately set up for that without a suppressor. Okay. All right, so now what? Well, we know that's good. We could fire that. We simply grab our computer, plug it in the top here. Well, I like to plug it into the bayonet first because otherwise it's gonna say no bayonet connected. This little thing's pretty smart. And that's going to boot on. And there it goes. Now we're ready to fire with no suppressor. And that's how easy it is to set that up. Okay? So every barrel, every rifle is different. Um, you're just going to have to use the spacers to a point where it makes sense to you. And then that you're clearing, you're using your alignment rod. And you're making sure you're clearing that, that, uh, clearing that, that, that barrel. Now, if this is too close to the sensor or too far, like on the suppressor, I had it kind of mounted halfway in between. Um, this should work based on the setup we've done before, but if you start getting weird readings or no readings, you're just gonna have to make adjustments forward and back to make sure that's okay. And then sometimes if you're too far from, if, if this is too low, um, then you can have tough times reading it also. Um, the most important thing is to make sure, first off, that this is aligned and not in the path of your projectile because obviously if you shoot it around and this is too high or canted you're gonna actually strike the bayonet and you're gonna be spending 70 bucks for a new bayonet okay so just that's really critical that you don't make that mistake otherwise you're gonna have a bad day at the range okay so that's basically how to set up your magneto speed uh, on your rifle uh, with the suppressor and without a suppressor if you guys have any further questions, I'm here to help. Just post a comment below. Uh, we'll do our best to just give you the answers you need if you have any questions. And thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day, and have a good time shooting. Thank you.